here, where the confluence of two very different marine currents created a paradise for animals, is hell for the intruders at the surface, where the roaring forties make this one of the most dangerous places in the world in which to travel by boat. In the Middle Ages, European logic and mythology already conjectured the existence of a great land of the south, or Terra Australis, to balance the weight of the land masses of Europe and Asia in the northern half of the planet. In the 15th century, the Spanish tried to find this place. In 1567, Alvaro de Mendaña discovered the Solomon Islands to the northeast of Australia, and this encouraged Spain to send more expeditions in search of the lost continent. The Spanish explorer, Luis Valles Torres, navigated between Australia and New Guinea, giving his name to the Torres Straits. But the Dutchman Dirk Hartog was the first European to land on Australian soil 72 years before the English pirate Dampier convinced the crown of his country that this land was worth the trouble. And history would determine it would come under British rule. All this history and much more is written in the remains scattered offshore and which now provide a home for some of the underwater life of the cold coasts of southern Australia. But if we travel north along the west coast, we come to a very different type of ocean floor. Following the underwater tracks of the manta rays and sea eagles, we enter the warm tropical waters which everyone thinks of as rich in life forms, but which in reality hide great surprises which we are going to discover. The deep blue little by little turns to turquoise. We are in a transition zone between the two types of water. The strength of the waves is broken by the first corals that protect warmer, calmer waters. The bacteria that break down the organic material rapidly reproduce in these waters which are warm but still receive the gift from the Antarctic. Matter is deposited while the energy of the sun gives rise to an atmosphere very similar to that which existed at the time when life on Earth was just beginning. Here in Shark Bay, these strange forms bear the mark of a decisive moment in the history of our planet. They are called stromatolites and their structure is the result of enormous groups of cyanobacteria, greenish-blue bacteria which, if there is plenty of sunlight, produce oxygen from the water. This may seem like just one more natural process, but if we consider they have been doing this for 3,500 million years, we will realize that they represent the origin of the evolution of all existing animals. From just water and light, they filled the atmosphere with breathable oxygen. Without them, we would not be here. In this area, the cyanobacteria produce a sticky mucus which traps the particles of sand. This structure is then strengthened by calcium carbonate carried in the seawater. But these traumatolites are not the only phenomenon exclusive to Shark Bay. On the beaches of Monkey Mia, there are frequent meetings between two of the most intelligent mammals in the world.
here, the wild bottlenose dolphins are used to contact with humans and swim close by them. Such is the attraction that guards are necessary to ensure that people do not frighten the marine visitors. But this relationship is more than a mere curiosity. The Australian Aborigines have traditionally spoken of dolphin energy. According to them, they achieve spiritual enlightenment through telepathic mind-to-mind -mind communication with the cetacean. They call it the dream of the dolphin. According to this ancient legend, human beings are descended from dolphins which never forget they are related to man. What's certain is that the dolphins come of their own free will and seem to prefer the company of children to that of adults. People that come to see them say they feel something special, a sense of peace, a strange happiness they can't explain. The dolphins even bring their young here, who thus learn to trust humans. But why do they do it? From a strictly biological point of view, it makes no sense unless we introduce such unscientific terms as affinity or interspecies friendship. All the experiments carried out have demonstrated the evident improvement of people with problems in relating to their surroundings when they are given therapy sessions with dolphins. It has been scientifically proven that dolphins have saved the victims of shipwrecks by carrying them or leading them to the beach that they use complex language and are able to establish close relations with humans. Perhaps the dream of the dolphin is much more than a myth. Perhaps once again the Australian Aborigines long ago realized a zoological truth which has not yet been discovered.